Keep going. Hey everybody, thank you all for being here today. Uh, my name is Ashley Miller. I am the director of your chamber of commerce. Uh, thank you all for being here. We've got a good crowd. We've got some great information. And so I'm really excited to share. Uh, you will find you have a piece of paper on your table to take notes with um, and ask questions. Um, I know we probably got a lot to go over today, so I'm going to just be real quick with what I need to say. Uh, please make sure you sign in. That makes sure that I have an accurate reflection of how many people are here and interested in our programs. Um, I've also left space on, space on the sign-in sheet. You can get your email or your phone number if you want to find out further information about some of the events and stuff we have going on. Uh, and I have some brochures here on the table, some different stuff we have. Uh, we're going to have a downtown open house coming up on December 5th from 537 with a little Christmas concert. We're going to have Santa Claus and, and welcome the spirit of Christmas to Ashford. And of course, we've got a Christmas parade that is always the second Saturday in the morning. That is December 14th at 10 a.m. sponsored by South Georgia Banking Company. Uh, then I've got some Halloween stuff, some extra paper. Uh, our dining guide here, if you're interested in where to dine locally here in Turner County, I suggest you grab one of those. Uh, a few housekeeping items. Uh, if you have a cell phone with you, will you please double check, make sure it is on silent or vibrate. At the moment, please do that now. Um, I know it can be a little distracting. The service in this building is not great. So, uh, the bathroom is here to our right, not this door, but this door, the door closest to the exit. If there is a fire or emergency, there is an exit there and there is one here. Uh, I want to thank my board members for coming out. I have Ms. Uh, Donna Kay over here. Woo -woo! All right. Ms. Patricia Harris. I've got Brad Christian and uh, uh, Ben Baker there. So if you have any complaints, you can take them up with Ben. Um, <laughs> uh, we've got plenty of food. Y'all help yourself. We're going to be very kind of informal here. Uh, we are here not to sell you on any particular insurance plan or anything. Our, our goal here is to uh, make sure that you have a comprehensive understanding of your needs for Medicare. Um, and so with that, I will introduce our guest today. We have Michael, also known as Gage Little, and then Tyler McDonald. Uh, they are insurance brokers with McDonald Group Insurance Services and also one of the newest members of our Chamber of Commerce. Y'all give her a hand. Um, they are a collaborate, they're an independent agency that collaborates with over 20 top insurance carriers across Georgia to offer comprehensive Medicare options. So they have uh, plenty of knowledge and experience in this field and they will be able to answer your questions and if you need to contact them afterwards, uh, make sure you grab a business card or some of their paperwork where you can get with me at, later at the chamber. Um, I wanted to say uh, thank you to Keep the Cube for providing the uh, barbecue chips and uh, all then the drinks. And then um, the fruit and vegetable trays actually came from the Piggly Wiggly today. If y'all didn't know that Piggly Wiggly does fruit and vegetable trays, they do. So uh, just a little shout out to them. But yeah, so I will get out of the way and hand it over to the fellas and take it away. Hey guys, my name is Tyler. Like she said, we appreciate the opportunity to be here today and kind of help out and educate and answer any questions. Uh, we had a presentation we were going to use, but I forgot the cord, so we're going to have to pivot and just explain it verbally. We can give out handouts if anybody needs any type of uh, written information or anything. So uh, this is Gage. Uh, I think the best way to start is maybe see if, since we don't have the PowerPoint, if anybody has any particular questions that we need to address, we can write them down as we go through a presentation explaining things. We can probably address those questions. Any type of individual. I know we're going to talk about the networks and TIF Regional, United Healthcare, and so if anybody has Is Chris Regional not taking it also? No, no, Chris, Chris Regional is taking it. United Healthcare. United Healthcare, United Healthcare. yes, sir. Yeah. So does anybody have? And who were you with? We're independent brokers, so we're a locally owned insurance agency, oh, okay. and we contract with the insurance companies. So, everybody you see on your table, United Healthcare, Aetna, Humana, any other you know names you see on TV, those are we represent all of them. So we're unbiased. We get paid the same, you know, for every carrier. So, you know, it really doesn't matter to us what insurance company someone has, but you know, there's a lot of things that go into it as far as networks, co-pays, that type of thing. But, 
Now, I'm sure several of you probably got a letter as well saying your plan may be terminated in these specific counties, so we'll address that as well towards the end of the uh, presentation. So uh, we'll start off. Does anyone have any particular questions about networks or about their specific plan or anything of that nature? Yes, ma'am. I need to know um, the The reason why the, I had to ask the state health question is because those plans are totally different than you're not on state health plan. Correct. So, so his options are completely different than what the lady's options here are because of if they're both Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement, if it's not state health, but the you know the options in and out of network, the copays in and out of network, the premiums, all those are different. So when she asked the question about the dental, is you know it was very important for us to know state health or not state health because those answers are different. Um, what about Medicare supplement? Anybody on here Medicare supplement? Okay. okay. United Healthcare or different company? United Healthcare. Advantage. Okay. Advantage. Just United Health. Just United Health. Is Advantage of that supplement? Uh, no, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So there's two different types of, uh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> so there's two different types of Medicare plans. So you have your Part A and B, and then you, everyone, I'm assuming, pays for their Part B, $174, comes out of their Social Security check each month. And in some cases, people may have Medicaid, which pays that $174 for you. So once you have Part A and B, you have two options. You can either go with a Medicare Advantage, which is a $0 premium, and it comes along with dental, vision, hearing, and it does have some small copays when you go to the doctor. and then. When you go to the hospital, you could have some significant co-pays with the Medicare Advantage plan. Where with the Medicare supplement, you pay a premium every month on top of your Part B premium. So you're paying the 174 plus another 100 to $200 a month for that. And you also have to pay for a prescription drug plan 
on top of that as well, where that's built into the Medicare Advantage plan already, and that's all, all zero with the Advantage plans. But with the supplement, when you go to the doctor, you have a $240 deductible for the year. Once you hit that, the rest of it's zero the rest of the year. So it's, it's a safe option, but it can get pretty expensive. So that's why people most, mostly tend to go to the Medicare Advantage plans. That it answered you guys' question or not? Yeah, what are they going to do if we, because I use Apple, it's yes, regional. What's they going to do? Are they going to take that? Okay, so with the Advantage plans and supplements, there's HMOs and PPOs. Now, with the HMOs, you if the provider goes out of network, like in the case with Tip Regional, you can no longer use your insurance with any of those providers, unless it's an emergency. Then that's the only case. You can go to the hospital in case of an emergency. Now with the PPOs, you can still go to a provider out of network, but the co-pays will be, they'll rise significantly if it's out of network or something. How do you know if they're in network? Um, we're able to look in the system and see which uh, providers are in network with um, each company and just kind of tailor it towards your specific situation. And check your primary care doctors, we'll check your specialists and just see what's best for you because what's best for you may not be best for for her. When you say they'll rise, the will rise significantly. Yes, How much would you say? Um, so, you he's going to struggle to answer this question because there's, in, in just Turner County alone, let's say United Healthcare has, uh, you know, for for one person, there might be four options. For a <coughs> person in a different situation, they might have four options or four different options. And then another person in a different situation could have seven options, six or seven options. So what he was saying about PPOs, HMOs, if you're, if, if it's pretty much everybody on United Healthcare in here at the moment. Okay, no other Anthem, Aetna or anything like that. Aetna, okay, all right. So for mostly everybody, the important things to check are, first, what type of plan you have, because you have Medicare Supplement and you have Medicare Advantage. And it gets really confusing because of all the commercials, all the mail you get in the mail. You get so much mail, so many advertisements, you don't know. You might think you know what you have when you first get it, but then if you don't have somebody that looks at it for you every year or somebody that talks to you every year, then what happens is if you keep the same plan for years, they could have renamed that plan and it could be similarly named to some of the plans they advertise on TV. You know, so you could be in a situation where you might think you have what they're talking about on TV, or then you might not. You might have completely, you know, something different. So you want to look at your plan and find out: is it Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement? If it's a Medicare Supplement plan and you pay a premium in addition to your Part B premium, right? Which means you probably have a Plan F, a Plan G, or a Plan N, then you're okay at TIF Regional regardless, because that's a standard PPO plan. Okay. All right, well, that, that plan is okay at Southwell, Tip Regional, Affinity, because it's the same in and out of network. So you would be fine if you have that. Really only two ways for you to find out, you know, you can look at your card, but if you don't understand it, you can call us, we will be able to tell you, or you could call the number on the back of your card and ask them, am I on a supplement, you know, what kind of plan is this and how does this affect my coverage going to Southwell, Affinity, Tip Regional. Um, if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan or a state health Medicare Advantage plan, you have to look at a couple different things. You have to look at, is it a PPO? If it's a PPO, then it will be accepted there, but it's out of network, which means on most of the plans, your out of network cost is gonna be higher. So for, and the reason why we can't give an exact example is because Medicare has a lot of red tape. So. I can't, for all different types of legal reasons, I can't say, hey, let me see your card and go through a specific example using your card. One-on-one -on -one we can, but not in front of everybody, right? But for an example, just a typical plan here, in-network might be a $40 specialist copay, out-of-network might be a $60 specialist copay, or you might have a percentage on your out-of-network. So if you go to your specialist and he's in-network, $40, if you go out, it might be 50%. Some plans have a percentage instead of a set copay. So let's say you don't do anything, you're on a PPO plan, you don't review it, you don't make any changes, you go to your doctor, one of the uh, cardiologists in Tipton, 
Affinity Southwell in February, and you're used to paying a 40, 30, 40 dollar specialist copay. If you have a percentage on there, that could go up based on what that provider is charging for those services. So if they're charging, you know, two hundred dollars, fifty percent is a hundred bucks. You know, you can go back and forth on that, but that's a real average cost on a percentage. So if you're in an HMO, you have HMO and you have HMO point of service. So some providers can take that if they choose to, but they don't have to. And then the only other option or the only way you get you know, service at an out-of-network facility if it's an HMO is gonna be on emergency-based services. So you could still, if you're driving through Tipton and something happens, a car wreck or you know, a heart attack or something, you can still go and they'll bill it out of network because it's life threatening. But if you need to go, you know, afterwards, if they're wanting you to come for follow up visits and stuff like that, if you're on an HMO plan, more than likely you would have issues seeing those providers. So, did I miss anything you have? Medicare supplement, PDO, HMO, and out network businesses. There are a few people that could be in a situation where if you're in a United Healthcare PPO plan, you might pay, there's a few situations where you might pay the same out of network and be able to go. But that's gonna be based off a couple different things like health and income. So you definitely wanna check and make sure, you know, what I would recommend is if you have like a local agent that helps you every year, that local agent calls you and follows, you know, reviews it with you, you definitely want to ask those questions and make sure that gets reviewed. Uh, if not, you can definitely, we'll hand out cards and flyers, you can definitely call us, we'd love to answer those questions. But you definitely wanna make sure that you'll be able to go see the providers next year that you know you're currently seeing out if you want to see them. If that makes sense. Well, United Healthcare told me that they would. I, I said it's going to be out of network. Yes, ma'am. You know, and they said they would pay forty percent. Okay, so that's a good example. Forty percent out of network means. But I didn't believe them, so I called back and talked to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, they I, said forty percent too. Yeah. But that's you know. I. I. That's good. That's good that you call back and double check because you know you don't know if that person you talked to started two weeks ago or two days ago. Or whether they speak English or not. That, all, all different <laughs> possibilities. So the total bottom, that's like 40% of the total cost. Now she just said 40%, but it was being out of network that they would pay 40% versus being out of funds. And then I'd get the advantage of, well, see, I don't have the advantage of money. Yeah. If, if it has a letter on it that says plan N, plan G, plan F. Mine's a plan J. J, okay, so you've had it for a couple of years then. <laughs> More than a couple of years. So that. It's <laughs> in my door like Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, you, you would be able to still go and get the same. Same, that my mind does change is that right yes yeah so so your services <laughs> there would be on the same network it's a different network and and they're not saying the good thing about the supplement is if, if a hospital says we're going to take medicare they have to take the supplement so you, your your services will be just like, like they are this year for next year okay. but if you're not in that situation specifically it could be 40 percent so right which in your situation would mean co-insurance. You would pay 60% and United Healthcare would pay the other 40 as well. Which would get pretty expensive compared to their in-network calls this year. If we're, like we have, I have United. Yes, ma'am. people in here that that's true because in the years past you didn't have to re-enroll it just rolled over right. you could check it if you wanted to but you didn't have to do anything this year they're changing that and they're, they're going to have more options like the anthem plan <coughs> talked about but 
if you're if you were used to your coverage being a certain way and paying a certain premium, if you don't review that, they, they might automatically change it for you next year. So, you know, we have all the information for anybody on the state health plans that wants to know how they would check and how they would enroll. Uh, but it's definitely if I can get my email pulled up here for you. Does um, anybody have any more uh, specific, specific questions? And I apologize for my abrupt question about who y'all were. No, you're, no fine. you're fine. No, we get that every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good question to ask. <laughs> but it was you never know. my understanding, I don't know what, what rumor mill I got this from, <clears throat> that there would be someone here, a representative from uh, Southwell, also answer some questions. Uh, and that's why I asked. Yes, right. You know. That was probably a, a misunderstanding. We can definitely answer all the questions you need. Did I text that to you or you know? But uh, yeah, so we, we've been in contact with Southwell and after November 31st, or after October 31st, they will be out of network with United Healthcare. So that's what all these effects are going to take place. Yeah, I understand how they could get a ship in the middle of the year. Yes, sir. So they, they, like they would have to go through January the 31st. It, it would make sense I mean, that they would. The yeah, it would make sense that they, I believe they should have to as well. I can't, I can't they, they can jump ship yeah. in the middle of the spring. They, they have uh, contracts, and you know, with these contracts, they're negotiating how much we're going to charge, how much you're going to pay, right? And then what you're going to pay, how fast you're going to pay, and if you, uh, we have to be unbiased in this, uh, you know, as far as our opinions go, who's right or who's wrong, whatnot, you know, but pretty much, you know, it's going to put people in some situations where they're going to have to choose, do I want to continue seeing the providers I see, or do I want to, uh, yeah, do I want to continue to see the providers I see and change my insurance, or do I want to change my providers and stick the same insurance? That's kind of a hard, hard battle because some people, I mean, I don't, I don't go to the doctor. I don't have any providers that I'm stuck to, but if I had a provider that I was stuck to who was taking care of me over the years, it'd be hard for me to make that decision, you know? But then if I had an insurance company who's paid my bills and I hadn't had any issues with, change either way can be kind of iffy. So um, it puts people, you know, there's a lot of people in tough situations where some people, you know, there might be United Healthcare. For us, it makes the job very difficult. This year is probably the hardest year uh, just trying to keep you know, our clients in the in the best position we can keep them in because you have somebody like in your position whose plan might be totally terminated. So let's say they're in Tip County, and Tip County has Tip and Worth County may have three or four less options than Turner County this year. So we might be talking to someone in Turner County, and, and in our mind think, okay, this is a good solution to this problem. And then when we talk to somebody in Tip County, we're like, that solution's not even there. So it makes it very difficult for them to do it mid-year because they were they you know started this earlier in the year, they signed an extension, they're going back over who owes who and they haven't made an agreement. I don't, you know, from what I've been told, I don't think that agreement would be made anytime soon. It could be sometime next year that they get back to the network, but there's no way, you know, to know. But for for people who are on, like, let's say for an HMO plan today, and they go to Tip Regional or their providers, Southwell, in November or December of this year, there are some, there are several different reasons for people to change their plans throughout the year. So there is opportunities for people to still change their plan today for November 1st. The only reason somebody would want to do that or worry about it for a couple of the reasons is they have some surgeries coming up planned for November, December probably want to review it because you could go from paying three hundred dollars on this plan surgery to what average six hundred six hundred so it could double the cost yeah if, if you were expected one you know and then you go do you have a question okay. all right so and then if uh if, I just got a general question. Okay. I got my card here, United Health Card. And it says <coughs> AARP, Medicare Advantage, and Health Care. 
So, so your situation, for example, your plan. Let's let's take TIF Regional out of the equation. Let's talk about Phoebe for a second. Phoebe is not in network with all of United Healthcare's plans, but you could go to some of their providers and be seen because of the POS. We don't know. There's no way for. Only reason I know this about Phoebe is because we've been doing it for years, you know, and we know now based on the experience. But with TIF Regional, with TIF Regional, there's no way for us to know 100% if you're going to be able to see your providers in November, December. TIF Regional, first year. And so if, if somebody had a PPO, if you had a PPO, you might just still go to them on United Health Healthcare, but you would pay a higher copay out of network. On that plan, you're, you got a larger percentage of not being able to see anybody. You need to review your plan. Yes, I am. November November. So I can't legally tell you you need to switch over, but I'll, you need to review your plan for sure. Uh, we can give you a card right here, or we have a form you can sign, and that gives us permission to talk to you about it. So, yes, sir. Yep. And you, we can talk to you before you leave. Okay. I'm fine because I've got too much technical data related to my phone. That's the chance. Okay. Wow. So, now we are still able to change plans. And that was my, you know, my, my, my as well. I have family members who are provided as well, and you're going to be with, you know, certain affiliated hospitals around. And it's kind of a, you know, they, they don't, none of the providers want to be put in this situation, you know, especially they don't, you know, they, they get tired of being asked, are you going to take my insurance, you know? Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's okay. No, so so Chris Regional, we haven't had any problems with United Healthcare and Chris Regional. You couldn't use those. Yeah. Yeah. You could. Uh, but you know, you just have to make it. You just have to make the decision if it's worth worth it or not. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Sorry about the audio. 
Uh, you can't keep people from over talking the speaker and of course the air conditioning system. So there you go. See you next time.